Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on the world of cloud computing. Today, my guest is from ExtraHop. We have Jesse Rothstein. Jesse is the founder and CEO of the company. So, Jesse, welcome to the show today. Thank you, Rich. Great, great to be here. So, so Jesse, we're here to talk about uh, what was a new term for me, though I, I was familiar with the concept, um, Applications Performance Management, or APM, and kind of the trends. What's going on in this space? Can you tell us more? Um, a- a- absolutely, Rich. Uh, you know, I, I prepared a, a presentation which just goes through a, a little bit of history and, and some of the trends that we're seeing. You know, first, uh, just a, a brief introduction. Xtrop was founded in, in, in 2007 you know, by myself and, and Raja Mukherjee. And uh, I'll say previously at, at F5 Networks, which is where a, a, a bunch of our founding team comes from, we really brought application awareness to what was the load balancer. And that, that created a whole new product category that's still called application delivery controllers and kind of firmly established F5 as, as the market leader. At, at ExtraHop, we, we brought application awareness to what was network monitoring. And that's, that's really innovative, and it's, it's pretty much created a new category called network-based application performance management. Now, performance management vendors have really over-promised and under-delivered for, for years or even decades. And in, in most cases, you know, IT teams use kind of legacy tools in the absence of anything better. These tools were designed for very, very static environments, and they're becoming less and less tenable in the face of uh, some really recent technology trends, or sometimes I call these IT mega trends that I'd like to just briefly talk more about. You know, first, uh, with Ethernet speed, I, 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 the, the, the technology advances over the past couple of decades in, within enterprise IT are, are just astounding. And I want to put them in, in some very personal terms. I, I'm not super old, but, you know, I, my, my first Ethernet network was actually a, a 10 base 2 network. It was, it was thin net, and it was running at 2 megabits. And today's 40 gigabit interconnects are about 20,000 times faster than my original Ethernet network. My, my first computer, which was an Apple IIe, had a 6502 microprocessor, which had about 3,500 transistors. And today's processors have more than 650,000 times more transistors. Now, this diagram is perhaps a little inflated because over at the top there, we've got the 8-core Nehalem, uh, and that's a bit of a beast, and it's fabricated with the old 42-nanometer technology. But even the, the newer 32-nanometer Sandy Bridges have close to a billion transistors. And, and when I think about Moore's Law in practical terms, I'm, I'm often reminded of this quote that I, I heard from the Human Genome Project just years ago, where, where one of the directors said something along the lines of, every, every two years we delay starting, we, we finish in half the time. And I, I think that's just a, a great way to think about you know, the, the rapid advances with, with computing. You know, in, in terms of storage, uh, you know, my first hard drive was uh, 20 megabytes, and it was about the size of that hardback edition of the Steve Jobs biography. Whereas today's, you know, one terabyte drives that you can literally fit in your pocket have 50,000 times more capacity. I think probably the least dramatic increase we've seen, uh, you know, only about a seven and a half times, you know, increase in the last decade and a half is uh, with physical servers. Uh, it's a little bit different when we look at virtual servers. Uh, there it's a nearly a 13, uh, 13x increase. But look at the trend. It's, it's increasing very, very rapidly, and, and, and more on that in a minute. Now, a little bit about the, the tools and technologies that, that, that people have been using really for, for decades, to kind of decades to manage these complex IT environments. A little bit of a timeline. I, I always like to start in 1987, because 1987 was a great year. You know, that's when Microsoft released Windows 2.0. Uh, bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer was the, the biggest hit song. But 1987 also began the age of the packet sniffer. That's when Network General Corporation shipped the first commercial Ethernet sniffer. It's also when Van Jacobson and his team at the Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory wrote TCP dump. Uh, what's astounding to me is that both of these tools are still widely used today. Now, the 1988 standard for SMMP also ushered in kind of the age of systems management. That's when companies like Tivoli and BMC really entered the scene. In the mid-90s, uh, SiteScope, later acquired by Mercury, popularized uh, synthetic transactions and service checks. NetFlow first became available on iOS routers, and that's when Precise Software developed custom agents for Oracle database uh, performance monitoring. By the late 90s, uh, we began seeing some really useful open source tools like Ethereal, now Wireshark, and Nagios. Uh, Wiley uh, pioneered Java performance management then as well. Uh, by the mid-2000s, T-Leaf Technologies did the same for HTTP user experience monitoring. And by, by the mid-2000s, user experience monitoring really hit mainstream with, with acquisitions by, by Mercury and Wiley. 
IT search was introduced by Splunk in 2004, and in 2009, you know, we began delivering really the first network-based application performance management solution. So really, due to advances over the tw past 25 years, we, we now have a, a toolbox of tools to, to turn to when things go bad. And this is really big business. You know, enterprises spent over $3.8 billion on network performance management and application performance management tools in 2011, according to the Gartner Group. And more when you, can, when you include things like uh, fault management and event management, which are, which are other categories. Now, these are, these are all pieces of the puzzle. But I have yet to speak to anyone who would claim that the problem is solved. And in fact, I, I think IT management technology is, is really lagging further and further behind. And, and, and what do we have to look forward to over the next decade? You know, applications used to run in a single silo in a single data center, and now they're distributed geographically across the globe. Widespread adoption of new technologies like server virtualization, you know, network storage, cloud computing, intelligent network devices, Basically, there, there's so many moving parts that, that something's nearly always broken or degraded. Most IT organizations are, are kind of scraping by with their existing tools and, and technologies and their established processes. But, but what happens tomorrow? What, what happens next year when the number of servers double or the number of applications quadruple and, and there are new strategic initiatives and, and new regulatory compliance? And I, and I want to point out when, we, when we're talking about failure modes, it, it's not just downtime. Your downtime is, is really high profile. We, we all read about it in, in, in the news and the media, and it's, it's certainly very costly. But what about intermittent failures? What about brownouts and occasional you know, performance degradation? These are the problems that the IT teams will really spend months and months trying, trying to track something down. And one, one of my favorite things we hear from our, our customers at ExtraHop is they'll tell us, you know, we've been searching for that problem for eight months, and the extra hop system showed us where to look. You know, and here's just, just a great quote. You know, as, as that complexity uh, of the IT environment really spirals out of control, we, we, we really require uh, advances in, in, the, in, the, in the technologies, in the, in the management toolbox in order to keep up. You know, and, and, and literally, that, uh, here's a little taxonomy of that IT management toolbox, and I, I, was, I was hoping to go through it uh, just bit by bit and, and give you a sense of, of, of the general categories that are available today. Sometimes I say that, you know, literally a hodgepodge of tools and technologies have been thrown at these problems for decades, and uh, that, that's absolutely true. You know, just, just starting with the, the SNMP pollers and, and NetFlow collectors, you know, these are problem, pro products that have been around since the, the late 80s and the very early 90s. Uh, fairly simple stuff. I mean, it's, it's, it's infrastructure monitoring. Uh, NetFlow itself is like a phone book. You know, it, it tells you who's talking to whom and for how long. But there's, there's no real notion of, of, of what was said in the conversation. Network probes uh, also have been around for a really long time. Um, some advantages of, of, of network probes is, is that these things are passive. They don't tend to add a lot of overhead because they're just looking at a, a copy of the traffic. They can be a pretty good source of network metrics. They, they can count bytes and packets. There's little or no application level detail. Um, you know, sometimes uh, the network probe vendors try to confuse this fact by, by introducing terms uh, that they call things like application response time. And application response time, I, looks at kind of the flow of bytes in one direction, the flow of bytes in another direction. No real notion of success or failure, no real notion of the actual transactions. But uh, these vendors do their best to, to blur the lines between what's, what's just a, a network metric and what's, a, what's an application metric. You know, I, I'm a network engineer by trade, and I, I'll tell you that I can't find what I'm looking for in a relatively small packet dump. Looking for a problem in today's large packet dumps, you know, with, 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 the, with the traffic levels that we see, is, is literally like looking for a, a snowflake in an avalanche. Uh, these tools can be very useful for, for forensics. Uh, you know, packet sniffers, uh, very much that the conversation is about what was happening, what happened in the past, not, not so much about what's happening right now. And it's worth noting that, that the modern enterprise packet sniffer um, will include a, a RAID array of hundreds of terabytes of storage and tons of moving spindles. And at today's you know, 10 gigabit rates and beyond, uh, that storage is, is exhausted for le in, in less than a day. I mean, literally you'll see between you know, 16 and 22 hours of look back after which, after which it's, it's cycled through and it's gone. Synthetic transactions and service checks are, are a great means of providing kind of that 
that sort of red light, green light, uh, is it up, is it down sort of, uh, sort of service. Uh, very you know, minimally invasive, easy to set up. Uh, however, there's, there's an inherent undersampling problem. If there's, an, if there's an issue that occurs intermittently, these service checks uh, and, and, and these you know, synthetic transactions will often miss it. It's also worth pointing out that synthetic transactions don't always fail in the way that real world ones do. So that, that's, a, that's a bit of a, a challenge there. And generally, you're, you're just checking the, the, the front end. So there, there, are some, there are some exceptions there. Uh, web experience monitors, uh, you know, fairly useful tools, but they've, they've really struggled to keep up with modern web applications that are not simple request response based applications. You know, with, with modern web applications, rich internet applications that make use of Ajax and Flash, you know, asynchronous requests will, re will occur behind the scenes in order to provide more of a native look and feel. Uh, but this makes traditional metrics for user experience monitors like, like page load time uh, a little less meaningful. Still uh, useful tools and they, can, they are just deployed passively so it's so not very invasive at all. Uh, probably the most traditional means of getting visibility into uh, an actual application is running uh, an agent or a profiler on every component of that application that you want to monitor. Um, you know, there, there's, there's actually a, a, a pretty high burden for deploying and maintaining these systems. Uh, generally, any new application rollout or any OS update or patch, the agents have to be recertified, they have to be reprovisioned, sometimes even, even, even re-rolled out. Um, a lot of times agents are, are, are marketed as, as very lightweight. Uh, I think that's kind of opposite day marketing. They do consume some resources, they do consume you know, CPU and memory. And in some cases, if, if you read the release notes, kind of the invasive techniques can, can even perturb the very systems that they're monitoring. Uh, the license fees can be pretty high, even exorbitant, because they are generally licensed on a, on a per server basis. Um, and, and there's often uh, some, some challenges within virtual environments. And this is kind of the, the hypervisor timing challenge where if you've got a hypervisor that sort of stops time and then, then speeds it up again, um, it, they have a lot of trouble getting any sort of uh, high precision timing measurements here with, with, with fidelity. Now, now, hypervisors do expose APIs so that they can establish a confidence interval and maybe determine how big of a problem you know, it is, but it, it's very, very hard to address that problem, per, perhaps even, even impossible. Um, now, I, I'm also a, a, a software developer in, in my past, and I'll tell you that we, we, we use tons of profilers in software development in order to, in order to really discover uh, hotspots and bottlenecks in our code. Uh, I think it's a great tool for, for those developers, and, and this is why DevOps teams like these tools. But we generally turn them off in production because we don't want to incur the overhead. And, and similarly, uh, I would say that agents and profilers are, are less useful for IT operations teams because the operations teams are, are trying to answer questions like, you know, is the application you know, working, performing better than it, you know, wor better or worse than it usually does. <laughs> you know, are transactions slower than they usually are? Are we seeing more failures on the database than we usually do? And while you can answer those questions with a performance agent, it usually requires a great deal of uh, customization and configuration and a pretty long implementation cycle. Um, Log file analysis and search, you know, I, I'm, I'm actually a, a pretty big fan. I, I think we're seeing a, a, a lot of traction. I, I would say that log file analysis and IT search are, are, are one of the more recent innovations within the IT management toolbox. Um, they, they, the, the, the resource requirement can be high. I mean, in order to deploy this at scale, we're seeing some pretty large clusters that are deployed with just lots of indexers and search heads. Um, and, and uh, you know, so, some of the uh, some of the, the leading solutions do require you know lightweight forwarders, which are, are really agents that, that are being installed for pre-processing and pre-parsing. Uh, that being said, uh, just a great ability to access data, uh, unstructured log data, and some some really good ability to, to build some 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 really nice dashboards with this class of tools. You know, and finally, net, network-based application performance management is, is is kind of my favorite. So, and I'll, I'll admit I'm, I am a little biased here. But the, the network is, is really the glue that ties together the tiers of the application. You know, so any multi-tiered application that has a web front end or a middleware and database back end and even network storage, it's all, it's all sort of bound together by the network. And previously, the health and performance information that was available by just looking on the wire was, 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 was not really harvested. It was kind of dropped on the floor. And only recently with, with, relative, with you know, gains in, in processing power and storage capacity, 
can we really extract those relevant health and performance metrics in real time, really as a, as a real time transaction monitor. So these, 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 uh, this class of tools are, are completely passive. They don't incur any overhead at all because they're just taking a copy of the network traffic. They do provide that visibility across the tiers. And, and the conversation can be about what's happening now because the metrics are, are, are very real time. Um, and, 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 and with this class of tools, there's the ability to, to perform proactive early warning. So, so learn what's normal based on a historical context and then raise alerts when anomalies occur. Um, Probably one of the, the only downsides is there's less visibility into the internals of the system, like CPU and memory, but there's a really good ability to associate kind of the application level performance with uh, the, the network perspective and even, even network level problems. Because sometimes you know, the, the network is the cause of an issue. And similarly, from the network perspective, you can often see secondary indicators of you know, CPU and memory issues because uh, the, 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 the systems will start pushing back and kind of saying things like, no, they'll, they'll throttle. They'll say, no, not so fast. I, I, I can't keep up. So, you know, kind of our philosophy around network-based uh, application performance management is that substantially all of the health and performance information that you need is really available on, on the wire. Uh, we analyze all of the transactions that traverse the network in real time. So we perform that, that network-level analysis from L2 to L4, and then real-time transaction analysis from analysis from L4 to L7, and that requires uh, full stream reassembly and full content analysis where everything has to be put back together again, and then the, the actual transactions you know, at, at, the, at the wire protocol level need to be understood and processed in, in, in real time. You know, just a, a few things to note in, about network-based APM is there's no overhead at all for this class of solutions. You know, uh, today's modern network caps can literally just siphon off a, a little bit of light, and we're, there, there, there are no additional layers of complexity. Um, another thing that, that I'll mention is that uh, ease of deployment is something that's, that's literally permeated our development efforts. So while a lot of the APM products that, that require deploying agents have a really long uh, uh, implementation cycle and a high implementation cost where you know, teams of sales engineers and systems engineers and consultants have to be parachuted in, um, you know, we've uh, really focused on, uh, on auto discovery and ease of deployment. You know, an extra hop system can be up and running in as little as 15 minutes. The system is, is plug and play. We auto discover uh, the environment. We auto discover all of the devices and all of the applications. We classify them by name and by role and by who's talking to whom. And, and, and our, our philosophy are, 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 is that you, know, you, can gain, get, you, you can get value out of a system you know, immediately in as little as 15 minutes, you know, plug and play. And, and maybe with a little bit more configuration, you, you can derive more value, but out of the box, you know, we want to provide value. So just in summary, I, I believe that IT complexity is, is literally spiraling, spiraling out of control. I think that the, con, you know, the continued advancement of, of, of the management tools and, and really technical innovation is, is required to keep up with this complexity. And I, I think that legacy tool, tools vendors have, have really been falling behind. But some recent developments in, within the IT management toolbox, uh, such, as, such as IT search and, and, and network-based APM, uh, are, are promising. So Rich, uh, with that, I, I'd love to take some, some Q&A. Well, sure, sure. Thank you for that, Jesse. So question about, uh, you know, um, you had your diagram on how the, uh, the systems talk to each other uh, with this network-centric kind of approach. Uh, does that make uh, your solution heterogeneous? I mean, does it care if it's an HP server and a, uh, a Cisco switch, or, or is it agnostic for that kind of thing? Um, no, you're, you're, you're absolutely correct. Um, our, our, our solution is agnostic. Um, we support heterogeneous environments. Now, this, this did require uh, some, some engineering effort on our part. You know, for example, for databases, we support pretty much every major enterprise database from you know, MySQL or, or Microsoft SQL Server, all the way to DB2. Um, you know, similarly on the web side, we support, you know, not just HTTP, but protocols for rich internet applications such as, you know, AMF and Memcache. Uh, we support NASs and IP-based SANs, which, you know, they tend to have pretty good interoperability. But, but we, we work in, in heterogeneous environments uh, all the time and, and really provide uh, good visibility across the tiers. So, so not just the network tier, not just that, that web front end, but the database tier, the middleware, the storage as well. And, and when, you, when you talk to that core switch, are, are you just coming off a, an Ethernet 
feed or like a mirror of everything that's going through that device or, or what's it looking at? Great question, Rich. What, you know, and that's a, that's a bit of a deployment question. And it, it kind of depends on the network topology of, of our customer. You know, some customers have built, you know, there's, there's actually kind of a whole uh, almost, you know, cottage industry of, of, of what's called span, span aggregators and, and ag taps. So some of our customers build, you know, their own almost L2 overlay network just for monitoring purposes. Uh, but other customers do use uh, simple uh, mirror ports and spans and backhoe captures at kind of their core switches and distribution switches. Uh, some hang it off the load balancer. There, there are usually some natural choke points where it makes sense to, to get access to that network traffic. And, and network teams have, a, have an awful lot of know-how for how, how best to do that. And, and also, you know, our, our systems engineers work closely with our customers in order to, 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 to choose that, the, the, the best places at, at which to deploy our, our solution. That's probably the, 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 single, you know, the single hardest part in deploying our solution is just figuring out where to put it. Once you figure that out, you, you literally plug it in and, and, and let, it, let it do its thing. And, and what does it look like for the system administrator, the, the interface? Is it, is it a graphical uh, kind of mission control showing what, what's going on and uh, you know, highlighting potential hot spots or, or cold spots? What does it look like? Um, so, you know, I think, I think what I'll say here is anybody can collect data, and I think we all know that it's much harder to turn data into information and even harder still to make that information actionable and to kind of, you know, you know, bubble up the, the relevant, most actionable information to the user's attention. So that's always a challenge and always something we're, we're, we're trying to improve. Uh, I think our, our, our user interface is a, is a browser-based user interface. And we do, I think, a, a really a, a very good job of exposing the, the, the key performance metrics that, that users care about. And we also built in um, not just an alerting engine, which does what, performs what we call trend-based alerts. So we, we learn what's normal based on the historical context. And then we can call things to the user's attention when, when, when they're anomalous. You know, if, if the database transactions start uh, failing more than they normally do, or if they start taking longer than they, they, they typically do, we can bring that to the user's attention. But we also have a, another part of our product called trouble groups, which really performs um, some, some multivariate analysis based on our experiences with deployments. So we've, we've captured a lot of our, a lot of the typical sort of hard to find esoteric performance problems. And, and, and in our user interface, we can say, hey, you know, this might be going on over here. You should take a look at, at this device or these, these sets of, of, of servers. Um, so we, we built a lot into our system, which as I said, is, is graphical and is browser-based to try to call that relevant, actionable information to the user's attention. So Jesse, we were talking before we started the recorder here, and you used the analogy of the telescope versus the microscope, right? I mean, you wouldn't use D-Trace to figure out um, why you're having a global problem at certain times a day or something, right? So, so how does your thing fit in with that analogy? You know, D-Trace is, is a great example. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed that you brought that up. Uh, so absolutely, what, what I said earlier and, and, and what I believe is that a lot of the, the legacy management tools uh, tend to either provide a, a high-level overview, kind of that 50 or 100,000-foot view, or, or, or they provide kind of this microscopic view where maybe you're looking, you know, for, for you know, D-Trace for specific, you know, uh, watch points within the kernel or within the code, or maybe you're looking at, at bytes and packets. And, and that's what we call telescopes and microscopes. And sometimes I describe the XDROP system as, as more of a Google Earth for networks and applications. But you can start at that high-level overview and then drill down the transaction-level details. You can go up and down the, the, the protocol stacks and left and right to, to peer devices. And I, I think that's, that's just a, that, that's the type of, um, you know, that's the type of, of, of metaphor that's really re required for, for, for today's, uh, you know, complicated uh, IT environments. So Jesse, you're, you're a technologist. You've had this out for a while. Where do you think APM technology is headed? Um, you know, that's a, that's, a, that's a great question, and I, I think a lot about that. Um, you know, tr traditional APM has been agent-based, and what that means is you've got performance agents running on all of your systems, and they're performing really invasive tasks like bytecode instrumentation and call stack sampling. And a lot of those things were pioneered by, by Wiley, which was you know, later acquired by uh, Computer Associates. Um, I think with companies like us pushing the envelope of what you can do from a network perspective, I, I really see the, the potential to kind of 
carve out APM into both both network-based APM and host-based APM. And I, I think host-based APM will, will always exist, but I think that network-based APM has so many advantages uh, from in, in production environments and, and also as the IT environment sort of transitions from a very static environment to a very dynamic environment. And if you think about it, the IT environment used to be uh, locked down, used to be very static. Everything was you know, registered in your configuration management database. Um, nowadays, with server virtualization, VMs spin up, they spin down, they be motion across the data center. You know, people will offload workload to uh, elastic compute clouds. Um, you know, there's uh, n centralized network storage, intelligent network devices, and and and, and basically, um, you know, basically in, in that environment, the, the IT environment has become so dynamic that I think it's it's it becomes it's it's really difficult to take that 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 traditional or, or legacy approach. So I, I, I very much see network-based APM as, 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 as gaining a lot of traction. And we also see a lot of the, the legacy network management uh, vendors struggling to, to try to add some application visibility. And, and if they can't add it fast enough, you know, they'll, 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 they'll ch change their marketing messaging to talk about it as well. Well, great, Jesse. I guess uh, I, I should ask, you know, how, how does somebody who's, uh, you know, struggling with these issues, I mean, how do they engage with, with ExtraHop? Well, um, that, 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 that's a great question. And uh, you know, one thing that I'll, I'll just mention, uh, since you know, we've got a pretty wide audience here, is that we've got a, a, a live demo as well as kind of a, a, a free web service where you can try out uh, the XROP system. And that's at networktimeout.com. So uh, that, that, that gives anybody the ability to not just use our system for some some, some canned network traffic that, that we've loaded from our, our, our lab environment, but also the ability uh, to upload your own packet captures and see what they would look like in, in our system. Um, now, of course, uh, standard disclaimer, you know, if you're uploading a packet capture in the cloud, you know, make sure that this is from a lab or test environment and doesn't include any, any sensitive information. Uh, but that's a great way for people to get involved with our system. And of course, uh, you know, our, our, our sales team stands ready to, to, to talk with anybody who's, who, who might be interested in a purchase. But, but for, for my part, I, I, I'll say that I am a technologist, and you know, I, I love trying to, to push the envelope in terms of you know, high-speed packet processing and application awareness. And you know, I, I believe in solving problems. And, and you know, it, with, with these IT mega trends that are occurring today, I, I think that we don't have any shortage of problems uh, for, for the IT operations teams. Well, great. Well, uh, Jesse Rothstein, I want to thank you once again for uh, coming on the show today. Thank you so much for having me, Rich. You bet. Okay, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on the world of cloud computing.